Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Milka Lover, and thank you for joining me here in Kaiser Reich, in which we are playing as Serbia. Because, at the time of this recording, a lot of people wanted me to play as Serbia, because apparently they have a different focus tree, but we're doing rural credit banks. Simply put, credit is lacking in rural areas. Often concentrated in urban areas instead, rural credit banks are a growing presence in Gagarian countries. And Serbia, of course, is no exception. These banking systems created to give poor peasants access to much needed financial support and credit will help grow rural economies. Now, with Serbia, we have election of 36. The, second t the term of the second president of the Serbian Republic, Dragomir Vasic, is coming to a close, and on the 5th of October, new elections will be held to the Serbian Skupstina. Their new coalition shall be formed and elect a president and prime minister to guide Serbia for the next five years. As the world uh, veers closer to war, and so do the Balkans, a force which wins this election may get to decide the fate of the country for, for ages to come. Elections in Serbia will take the form of a series of events in which a player has a choice to boost or weaken one of the following five political parties. These groups. The Republicans, radicals, or socialist workers will gain the plurality once polls close, and coalition formation begins, because Serbian politics are heavily parliamentary, however. Simply getting a plurality is not enough. Strong coalition partners are needed to successfully form a majority, and therefore, while responding to events and influencing party strength, we need to consider whether they'll likely find enough cross-bench supports. The Republicans, Lucky Coalition, Republican Socialists, and the Conspiracy. It's a military secret society formed within the Serbian army in the 20s, under the guidance of former members of the Black Camp. Its proclaimed goal is the unification of all Serbs and the motto strong Serbian identity, strong Serbian nation. Its ideological beliefs are all across the political spectrum, and do not hold it back. These members do not hesitate to assassinate King Alexander II in 1925, and now show a more malleable Serbian Republic, their influence. It's pervasive in public life, but its wide net of contacts will give us access to powerful boons if we take advantage of it. The conspiracy and support of Serbia's primary means of rearmament, and this category grants us access to an array of decisions to improve our military. We have two ways to prefer paying for this rearmament. Rely on a context in the military which would boost our national popularity, or we can bypass the military and provide large amounts of political power instead. So I've already done the support resistance in NIS, which is like over here, a niche, NIS, and then contact or contract rifle manufacturers in which we got a few more guns as well, which is pretty nice. And uh, right now we are at 16% national popular support. So this we're going to go... I don't know what way we're going to go. We might as well go that way and try out this conspiracy. But we have the Treaty of War Tolls, which is god-awful. Oh, no. We have the Secret Rearmament, which is pretty good. Not bad. I like that a lot. We have a Scar Nation, which is pretty bad as well. And then we have the Conspiracy, which makes us lose 16% political power, which sucks. But, oh, well. Switch forms of payment. When I select this, you open out uh, pay with political power. Um, Let's get some more manpower, national populism. Let's get some more recruitable population factor and war support. Uh, and now we're on current level conspiracy level 4, 20 to 30%. Greater control levels unlock more powerful decisions. Hidden artillery purchases? Why not? Let's see, 300 units of more support equipment. Levy support equipment? Yes, please. We can't do this one because we need to get rid of the Treaty of War Tolls. And research the Katna Kola model 1927. So, we've got some time. And the road to unification. And vain threats the abyss of heck. And the vein, the fire of thunder. Let the stone crack, the oak break, let the earth quake. There lives, there lives a Slavic spirit. It'll live for ages. Um, okay, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Uh, I guess Serbia is still not only the client state of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but this grip grows looser by the second, and once it finally falls, all Serbia's enemies may may tremble. Serbia will be great again, yeah. So Sorry, I didn't want to read that one. It is what it is. He didn't like tank purchases. So we need the uh, Katina Kola, model 1927. The Serbian elections of 36. Now, this one might be more important to read. And that's 37. Um, oh, we need just that one. Okay, I'll about The term of the second president... Uh, the Serbian Republic, Dragovar Vasic, is coming to a close. Uh, if you want to let's go ahead. According to the Constitution of 1926, the Skupstina is an union cameral legislator elected by all male and female citizens of the Serbian Republic in free universal secret ballot for a five-year term. The government structure serves as semi-presidential. The president is elected by the legislature, much like the prime minister, but has considerable power in domestic policy and the appointment of public officials, alongside the usual, usual duties of representation of state and foreign affairs. While the prime minister is dependent on the backing of the Skupstina, the president serves a predetermined five-year plan no matter what is taking place in the legislature. That's not to say that he's all-powerful, however, and he needs parliamentary support for pretty much all appointments in legislation. The electoral campaign in Serbia began late last year and continues into 36. As the world is closer to war, and so do the Balkans, a force which wins this election may get to decide the fate of the country for ages to come. May the strongest party win. And nothing else here. Cool. Which is fine with us. Totally fine. Kornilov. Oh, hello. Will Russia ever rest? Well, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not sure. Pickaxe of the future. The Vidov Dadan speech. Nationalize these groups. Leave the free trader Black Monday. Ooh. Immunizations and literacy is not bad. 
Ooh, ooh, must be called the Ocean Total Charter. Hey, Mr. Handsome. But, despite decades of rural uh, education funding, the inhabitants of the serving countryside remain largely illiterate, nor are they provided with basic health care and livelihood. We should establish traveling companies of teachers and doctors to provide serving villages with immunizations and free lessons on basic literacy. Shots in the dark. <clears throat> the news reports are still flying in, the store is being pieced back together, but here is what already known. Major Zivan Nesnevich an induct into the Conspiracy Secret Society, an officer in the Serbian army, was making his way home in Belgrade, along with a fellow soldier, when the two of them realized that they were being followed. Not wishing to take the risk, the two men hastened their pace, hoping to come, either come across civilians to use its cover or phone booth to call the police, but neither came instead. The mysterious assailants opened fire, seriously wounding Nizjevic, and in his peer, wounded, the officer was dragged out of sight, and so was the corpse beside him. It took the police two days to be informed about the officer's disappearance, and a search across Belgrade was immediately initiated. Nizjevic was found, but by then it was already too late. He was long dead since. Police officers found his corpse on the outskirts of the city, and was left with a message. Thus, unto all enemies of God, the king, and the white hand. How dare they? Oh boy. Well, that sucks, bro. We got plenty of guns, though. But fortunately, we can't train anybody, which really sucks. What was this? Oh. Support resistance? The rise of the conspiracy. Though, uh, Serbia owns its Republican democracy to the conspiracy and other secret conspirators within the Serbian army. It appears that their influence over the country has grown greater than anyone could have anticipated. A cabinet which is not approved by the militarists has little chance of surviving for more than a few months. More and more resources are being diverted strictly to army matters, and nationalist fanaticism grows more and more powerful in the public society. So you mean to suspect a possible coup? Or worse, after all, how can one possibly trust an organization inspired by the Black Hand itself? No good. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Probably not. But I get more stuff here, which makes me feel good. So maybe this is a wrong thing to do. Black Monday. Hey, Black Monday. Uh, Montenegrin opium farms. Ooh. Oh, look at this one. Oh, conspiracy controls below five. Well, we can't do that one. God dang it. I should have read that one before we started doing stuff. Oh. Huh. Right, that's 10%. Yeah. Withdraw from Italy. Uh, I want to do this one first. Huh. Wow. They're 36%. Holy crap. Black money hit Serbia. Serbia was devastated by the Valkyrie more than any other nation. It lost a quarter of its population and the entire nation was left plundered. Half of it was annexed by Bulgaria, while the rest had to accept massive concessions to the Austrian Empire. And yet, despite it all, Serbia endured slowly rebuilding a stable, weakened economy based around agricultural production and free trade. The reforms by King Alexander II's Prime Minister, Vojislav Velikovic, were not undone by the Republican government, and so the stable Serbian dinar fought, he fought for remained throughout the 30s. Uh, the collapse of the Berlin stock market has undone most of the work. Though Serbia is not as tied to the German economy as other countries in the region, the collapse of the worldwide trade has sank our agricultural exports and so much left of the economy in a void. A package of response measures and reforms has already been prepared, but the populace hit straight in the pocket and no longer holds as much stress on the Republican Party. After all, they should have prevented this. This is a disaster. Now get to respond to Black Monday. Oh, we need political power for this. Oh, for the yeah, offer building slots, I guess. All right, wait, and Shing. And they'll stabilize the Serbian dinar. The stability of the Serbian dinar, ensured by Prime Minister Vojislav Velijkovic, has always been Serbia's primary economic asset. Now, when the new economic crisis besets Europe, we need to ensure that this asset lasts by any means possible. Montenegrin Federalist gains in local elections. Several months prior to the parliamentary elections of the Serbian Republic, local elections for mayors and district councils have been held in Montenegro, and the Montenegrin Federalist Party has acquired an impressive victory. A majority of the mayors, district councils, and other notable elected positions in Montenegro are now held by the members. In addition, the CFS also plans to contest the Montenegrin seats in the parliamentary elections, and both of its leaders, Silkala, Sekula, Durevelic, and Novika Radovic, are standing for the Skuspina. Skus, Skupstina. The CFS, as a moderated successor to the Montenegrin Greens, a guerrilla movement loyal to the house of the Petrovic Njedjos, which operated in Montenegro during the 20s. When the unification of Serbia and Montenegro into the Papa Kingdom under the, oh God, Karadorovic, oh Karadorovic, was proclaimed by the Central Powers, these guerrillas organized in the mountainous regions and remained active until the Republican Revolution. While radical members of the movement continued this struggle, they could hardly ever expect the restoration of the House of Petrovic Nijoskos, even in the Montenegrin federal unit inside Serbia. Moderates and Montenegrin politicians led by Drilovic and Radovic sought to negotiate. President Jasa and Prodonovic granted them amnesty and signed several concessions for the Montenegrins under law, such as increased local autonomy and recognition of the Montenegrin language. Now that 36 rolls around, the CFS remains a powerful force in Montenegro, and the deputies in the, uh, the Skupstina may prove crucial in swinging the election, depending on who they choose to work with. 
Socialists get support, huh? Also, I'm the socialists. Radical socialists. I want to tank these guys. You know, I want uh, level five. Hmm. I don't want to lose stability. There you go. Our men in Sofia. Eyeing Bulgaria like a hawking, a hawk sucking prey. We see that our neighbor is entering a period of political strife. Here's a resentment towards the authoritarian regime of Tsar Ferdinand. His son, Crown Prince Boris, and their lackeys are finally exploding. As a considerable faction of the Bulgarian parliament are now openly campaigning for the restoration of full constitutionalism and the abolition of the State Protection Act. Our only interest in Bulgaria is the destruction of the hated hegemon. We, in fact, have our men in Sofia. The Bulgarian Hungarian National Union, or Alexander Stamboyevsky, as a radical Republican faction of the BZNS, an Hungarian political party, now shattered by the Bulgarian government for their opposition to the war, and still struggles to pick up the pieces. It's led by Alexander Stambolyski, himself a man who has no illusion of ever working within the royalist regime again, and a rare Bulgarian politician who proudly calls himself a Yugoslav. The authorities in Bulgaria still believe that he is hiding somewhere in Sofia, when in reality he's safe in Serbia, from where he is able to command his faction of the BZNS. He still keeps in contact with the parliamentary faction of the BZNS, able to exchange information and sway a few of them to support the abolition of the State Protection Act, which, as Stambolisky assures, will be the first step towards an Hungarian takeover of Bulgaria, which will be able to work with Serbian peace. Should we support this gamble and set back a more reliable option such as Czechnik resistance in Nice? We don't care about Sofia, Czechnik resistance is our priority. That is not bad. Um, yeah, if we could really cause a lot more problems, that'd be great. Holy crap, that sucks. That really sucks. But, let the speech. The right wing of the Serbian political spectrum, beyond the People's Radical Party and the Garens, is mainly composed of monarchists. Among them, two movements are the most notable. The State Party of Serbian Democrats was the sole legal party of Alexander II's royal dictatorship and lingers on, a, on as a small moderate monarchist party, concentrated in a few constituencies where they are the strongest and they are too insignificant to threaten the Republican order. They are allowed to remain illegal after the revolution. The second, as a party formed after the revolution for a new generation of monarchists named Budenje, Awakening, and its leader Dmitri, Dmitri Lutuch, which has slowly been making a name for himself. Speaking before the Skupstina, Litoch addressed what he perceives the key issues of the Serbian Republic, the death of God and the nation overtaken by loss and contempt, and the daily endless crushing of souls by the sledgehammer of capitalism, which the past governments have enabled with their policies. The politician's esoteric way of speaking convinced few and made him a few allies in the legislature, but was a characteristic of the so-called Mita Bogo Mozjak, devotionalist Mita. Even back when he was an official in the King Alexander's second uh, royal dictatorship and deputy Smederevo, Litovich, or Lito, Litoch, was unnerving to his peers. He declared his service to the K group to be divine providence, that the serving people had to have a god bestowed mission in the world, and his orthodox faith was beyond even fanatical. Leading a far right extremist nationalist royalist party, Litovich is a minnow on the political stage, and so has been allowed to remain for so long. But who knows where he might end up if the circumstances change? If it's level 5, maybe we shouldn't do this anymore then. Just because, as much as I want national populism and stuff, um, I do want to be able to do this stuff. Yeah. Okay, does not have the national spirit, the conspiracy, huh? Well, maybe we'll keep going on. That's ah, cool, we'll keep going on. Regional tractor stations. I'll do this one first. As part of our agriculture mechanization progress, we need the industry to support its demands for tractors, spare parts, and maintenance uh, sharply rise. Thankfully, the Serbian company uh, Zadrugar specializes in this industrial sector. With extra help from the state, they will be able to meet their growing demands with more ease. And bold a socialist movement. The ongoing economic crisis has uh, dealt a serious blow to the mining industries of Montenegro and manufacturing in Belgrade. The workers are, there are understandably unhappy. This creates a potent radicalized mass for the radicals on the left to take advantage of and build a support with the Socialist Workers Party and call for the labor empowerment is attracted to the average Joven out on the streets. They compete for this niche with the Socialist Party of Serbia, however. Our forms break away from the SRP composed of its moderate wing, which generally serves as a mediator between the Republicans and Socialist Workers. Though still inherently socialist, they say that the material conditions in Serbia are not fit for a revolution and that socialism can instead be achieved through the parliamentary process to which side this mass will bend. Socialists or socialists? Let's get more socialist support. There you go. Revenge. Once again, <coughs> law enforcement of the Republic has been mobilized after reports of a committed high profile murder, and this time it only took a few hours before the officers in Kragujeva were met with a horrifying sight in the poor districts of the city. Several officers from the Serbian army were relieved a few years ago because of suspicions they belonged to the White Ham, stabbed and hanged by their feet publicly. A few children playing football around the block explained that some strange-looking men hanged them there not too long ago. Only the dimness, uh, dimness failed to realize who was behind these murders. Not only was Major Zivan Nezevich, a respected member of the Serbian Cultural Club, and the secret organization behind it, he was also a brother of Radoj Nezevich, 
a command of the Serbian Air Force, a leading member of the Republican Party in conspiracy. While the military is understandably silent about the events, and Nezovic uh, merely expressed his soul grief at his brother's death, it's almost certain that these assassinations were made as an act of righteous revenge. And again, like much everyone expected, the police closed the case a few days later, stating that the investigations will pause for the time being as no possible suspect has been found. We are a stable Democratic Republic. Please believe us. No, Oswald. Cool. There's another spirit of the conspiracy. So if we get rid of the conspiracy, then we can do it probably, right? Maybe not. I don't know. Wow, we lost 35% political power, huh? That sucks. We could use all the stuff, man. Support. Oh, yeah, definitely do that one. Slowly going down for them, but that's going to cost them quite a bit of guns. Hopefully. Republican election strategy. Originally founded as the Republican Democratic Party, the Republicans consider themselves to be the successors to the independent radicals of the pre Valkyrie era, its left wing Republican sympathetic faction in particular. It was founded uh, by Luzhimir Sadonovich and Yasa Prodonanovich in 1920, and have instantly moved into opposition to Alexander II's royal dictatorship. Being the most vocal Democratic faction in opposition to the king, it swiftly built up support and championed the Republican Revolution and the Serbian Republic as more left wing of the two main establish par establishment parties, the other being the People's Radical Party. Into the election of 1936, the Republicans go, with, go in with everything to lose. They've been in power for the last 10 years. Under Presidents Pradanovic and Vasic, and now face opposition from left and right. If they seek to remain in power, they need to prevent the Senate from collapsing and ensure that neither the radicals nor socialist workers are able to muster a majority without them. What well, should the strategy be in this election? Maybe I did this incorrectly. I probably did. Ben Brooks on stage one, well, it's pretty normal. We get more political power if we do this too, so. Oh, wait, maybe we don't. Oh, well, whatever. I want to see what happens. Zenitism. The loss of the Valkyrie marked a fundamental change in Serbian society, and its culture was no exception. An absolute majority of Serbian males died in the war, and almost a quarter of its total population. While the few remained had to return to burned homes, looted towns, abandoned farms, and broken dreams to cope. Many turned to art to express their frustration and sorrow, and yet the onset of Alexander II's royal dictatorship has stymied the development of Serbian art and culture under heavy censorship. The Republican Revolution in 1925 let this pent-up energy loose, and the following decade has left its mark in Serbian culture as a period of avant-garde style, or avant-garde art. Literature and cultural critique, free movements were more exemplary of the spirit than Zenitism. Named the art magazine Zenit. Founded by Lubomir, Minich, Ivan Gol, and Bosko Tokin, it publishes articles on modern day society, or modern society, art reviews, and culture of publications. While contributors to the magazines are numerous, a common strand of anti war, anti nationalist, and anti capitalist runs through, through it. Uh, thought runs through it, and above them all, modern Western society. What was the reason why Serbia suffered so much? Mikic and his associates pondered in the pages of Zenit. It because Serbia, having chosen to abandon its unique Balkan spirit and communal, peaceful culture, sold a soul to a greater European civilization in the cold, heartless machine of modern capitalism. That machine gave the tools of modern war to Serbia with which she killed herself. Some describe Zenitism as anarcho-primitivist, pointing out their scathing critique of modern technology and slightless style, while others see it as taking their thought too literally. As 1936 turns, Zenit and Serbian avant-garde continue their course. Even though as years pass, the memory of the Valkyrie devastation grows duller, they seem as unpatriotic rather than visionary. The youths are troublesome as always. Offers from the conspiracy. The conspiracy has been observed in the election of 36 from the shadows and the growth of the socialist movement in Serbia has left them concerned. There's no threat of a revolution, at least not yet, and the moderate faction of the SRP is firmly under the secret society's control. But they nevertheless present an unexpected factor in Serbian politics. And when the restoration of greater Serbia is on the line, the thing which conspiracy wants the most is no unwanted surprises. So the military offers to provide its support to the Republican Party, and start a secret intimidation campaign among the socialist ranks by pressuring some of the most vocal figures to shut their mouths and fall in line. The party will surely lose steam quickly. Is it risky? Ah, do it anyways. Ah, screw it. We're going to go all the way in. We're going to have no... Literally, we're going to lose political power. Wow. 58% is pretty radical. I'm not going to lie. Oh, we completed Black Monday. Oh, whatever. I can give credits. Even though we're losing political power every single day. Because of a developed rural region. Huh. Ah, sure, why not? We'll try it. Modernize Belgrade? Yes. While the capitals recovered from the destruction of the Valkyrie, 
Belgrade remains relatively undeveloped compared to other European capitals. More effort and investment are required to bring this great city into the modern world. Nice. Now we have no factories. We got nothing here. Oh, the UBD's gone. Going extremely radical early on is probably a really bad idea, but whatever. Whatever. Destitution in the countryside. The three fourths of the Serbian adult population are engaged in agriculture, and the absolute majority of them are subsistence farmers, uh, only bearing growing enough food to support themselves and the family. The economic crisis has thus impacted these farmers severely. Many racked up debts in the months following the stock market crash and lost their homes as a result, while others struggle to support themselves with little money they have, or little land they have. This has made a gearing issue an important talking point in the election, and several parties have been isolated in the front runners in the viable farming voting bloc. The gearing party run by Milan Garolovic and Jovan Jovanovic Pizon have traditionally represented farming interests, but have yet to escape from the opposition. The Republicans have traditionally been an urban center party, but many of their members have been building support blocks in the rural Uzic and Montenegro regions throughout the past decades, and finally, the socialist workers with a program of radical land redistribution cannot wait to take advantage of the crisis. Let's go with the Garians. Hopefully that lowers our support a little bit more. Well, never mind, we're at 60%. I want more manpower, man. I want more guns. Who cares about this political power? <laughs> I might have to replay this. We'll see what happens. I don't know, we'll see. Because we're at 66%, which is kind of radical and extreme, but whatever. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to have to wait until we get rid of the conspiracy thing. Um, yeah, I probably made a bad choice by clicking all, on all that stuff already. Probably. But regional tractor stations. In the modern day and age, and tools and plows are being replaced by tractors and machines. As service has become a modern advanced economy, it needs to be more of the latter, less of the former. An established system of leasing and borrowing state owned tractors to improve agrarian productivity. Green shirts. The People's Radical Party, hoping to mobilize more support for the electoral campaign, and begin to form uh, uniform parliamentary organizations. It serves the party's arm in the countryside. These organizations named the Green Shirts after the uniforms are the idea of the Milan Stajodinovich, the leader of the party, and are very clearly inspired by the success of the Iron Guard next door. Though uh, it may seem odd for a liberal democratic party to copy the policies of a radical national populist movement, that's also not illegal. Dragomir Vasic and the Serbian Republican Army now, or party, now have a decision on how to respond to radical militarization. Form our own. There you go, why not? Service propaganda? This is so stupid of me to do. But how far can we go? Like, we're at, we're at 79%. Can we just have the elections now? Seriously. I'm digging myself such a deep hole. Oh, defeats Mongol Rebels. Good job. Good day, Talon Siam. The video of uh, Don's speech. The day of St. Vitus, or a video of Don in Serbian language, is considered to be the most important day in this na national identity of Serbia. It is this day, at 1389. The medieval kingdom of Serbia defended its independence against the Ottoman Empire in the ba Battle of Kosovo, an event which forged the national myth of the Serbian people for centuries to come. Ever since 1918, however, the commemoration of the day has been silent and modest. It was the day when Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in Sarajevo, an act by many Serbians still cannot live past, who has brought upon them so much destruction and loss. During the reign of Alexander II, a small monument was erected in Gamasistan to honor those who fell in battle, but the observations there went small. 1936 was different. President Dragomir Vasic himself attended the observations in Gazimistan, drawing large masses of Serbs to visit the monument for the first time there to thousands of his countrymen. He made a speech, and the speech was shocking. The language was shocking. For the first time since the end of the Valkyrie, the leader of Serbia declared that what they all experienced 20 years ago was a national humiliation. It robbed Serbia of its ancestral lands and people of Nice and Macedonia, and Serbia must not rest until it finds a way to return them to Belgrade's fold. The heroes of the marchers commemorated during the Viva de Vidan fought for a free United Serbia. After all, the only way to honor the memory is to overthrow the shackles holding Serbia back today. The speech was meant as a pause and patriotic chance. While Vasic's political opponents may denounce this as electoral pandering, um, everyone can tell that this marks uh, a sharp turn in the history of Serbia, and that no longer able to abide by the Treaty of Ortals and forge an independent destiny said. Zivila Serbia, Zivila Republica. Huh. Yeah, so if you worry about that, please go ahead. Oh, we're going to move Black Monday now. From the Military Council? Ooh, that's a bad. Radical election strategy. Uh, the People's Radical Party is one of the oldest political parties in Serbia. 
Founded as the Liberal Reformist Party in 1881, it defined Serbian politics before the Velkri dominated the political scene under the Prime Minister Sava Gudelic and Nikola Pasic, and championed moderate reform in a fail falling out with the monarchy immediately after the war ended. However, King Alexander's second personal distaste of the Pasic led to his dismissal of the party moving to, to, to the opposition and finally to the underground. It reluctantly supported the Republican Revolution in 1925 and stands as the more right wing of the two main establishment parties in Serbia. The radicals, led by Milan Stojodinovic, are in a comfortable position, while the left is, is infighting. The right is largely united, and there's the radicals and Hungarians have a lot of shared ground, while minor parties like the Democratic State Party and the Litujit, Litujit, Royalist Radicals are nothing to worry about. Should this stable, powerful uh, right be maintained? Only the radicals may be able to form a government once the election concludes. What should the strategy be in this election beyond? Become. Get yeah, both. Restore conscription, nice. Raise reserve divisions, nice. Well, that's awesome. Free trade area? Uh, that's not bad. Get more political power. New focuses will be unlocked. That's really cool. Um, I do want to get rid of Black Monday because it's still pretty bad for us. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to get rid of that. It's only 35 day focus, though. Resume cash crop exportation. Serbia remain, retains a very Hungarian economy, but its isolation and the recent economic troubles did severe damage to its imports. With the economy prices marginally stabilized, we can resume agricultural exports and invest in these prospects. What does this do? Oh, uh, I guess not. Oh, we do this stuff too. Oh, heck yeah. Form O. Well, we'll get to this stuff immediately then. Crap. Show our teeth. Okay. Remove a scarred nation when completed. So, if not completed within 36 days, so basically we are forced to do one of these 35 day focuses. So, which one are we forced to do? Restore conscription, raise reserve divisions, leave the tree trade area, and form a military council. One, two, three, four. Raise the reserve divisions, maybe? We don't have time. Well, I don't think we do have time for that one, but. The Bel Congress of Belgrade. Ah, while following the limitations of the treaty and paper, in practice, large paramilitary formations and a reservist scheme means that we were always able to raise a few new fresh divisions whenever we needed to. Now the Treaty of Wartos is dead, these plans can finally be put into place. There you go. And now we should have it. Cool. No Navy either, so. Give him a lot of resistance. 73. Wow. Oh, can we actually raise divisions now? Oh, thank goodness. Uh, we have no army XP, which sucks, but whatever. You know, get... What is these? Uh, they're not terrible. We could probably use one of these guys, too. Wow. We had a 98% radical takeover. We lose the political power every day. <laughs> My bad. There we go. Now we got some political power back, I think. Nice. We got a 16 combo with, which is not bad. And you guys are 18 combo with, which is not too bad either. Going to train for now. Things are falling apart, which is fine with us. Oh. Alright then, political Ooh, realization. Well, I still want to keep going down this way. The Social Election Strategy. The Socialist Workers Party was founded in 1919 as a merger of the Social Democratic Party of Serbia, Serbian Trade Union Organizations, and Montenegrin Socialists. And its ideology has been left a syncretic mix of all ideologies on the left of the establishment. Syndicalists, Marxist Socialists, Social de Democrats, and Agrarian Socialists all found a home in this party. It was banned by the Obznana during Alexander II's regime, but continued operating in the underground. Supported the Republican Revolution and joined par parliamentary politics as the leftmost legal party in the Skupstina. The Socialist Workers' Party has to find an uphill battle in the election. Even if they can harness enough anti-establishment rhetoric to achieve a plurality, they always have to worry about the possibility of an anti-socialist grand coalition between the Republicans and Radicals. Therefore, their goal is not just to grow on their own support, but to ensure that their allies on the left can outweigh the rightists. What should their strategy be in this election? Attack the right, don't let them grow too strong. I'll do that one. Uh, as much as I want to do this one, leave the Warthold's free trade area. Our post-war agreements with the Austrian Empire bound us to their economic bloc, strangling our budding economy and industry. These agreements need to go, and our country must once again be trade with the free world. Fairly. Fairly. Nice. Nice. We got rid of that god-awful stuff. And yeah, do some planes. Bones join the donut. Adrian Boone? Oh boy. That's not going to be easy, easier for us to fight, but whatever. 
Jibal Nashar Hassar. And then, uh, election 36 is complete, so we gotta wait till the election is done, so. We got some time. After this one, we'll probably grab... Yeah, is synthetic oil worth it? Uh, let's grab some of that. And then, make it stuff. Land auction, um, hmm. Well, I think we'll just go Superior Firepower. As much as I like, I actually really like going Grand Battle Plan for a while now, but let's go Superior Firepower for now. Uh, restore conscription next. A treaty of war tolls, among other things, prohibited us from enacting conscription or raising the size of our army above 35,000 men. Without conscription, however, we'll be unable to field any considerable force, thus we must rectify the situation immediately. Pretty much. Yeah. Election 36. Oh. Almost a year of campaigning and politicking has passed, and now the final stop remains, or step remains. Polling stations have been established across the election, or nation, and the country, and the votes are to cast, and the voters are to cast their votes to determine the vectors of the election. The votes have been encountered with little more than a few hitches, and they've revealed that the results in the new scoop scene will be that the Republicans and Socialists form a coalition government. Republicans win Serbian elections. Pickaxe of the future. If you want to know about that, please go ahead. Uh, consolidate the popular front. Hmm. Sweet checking associations. Oh. Oh, we can just want to do it anyways. Congress of Belgrade. If we're to top the Bulgarian hegemon, we cannot do it alone. We need to help the help of the other nations with outstanding issues with the Bulgarians. Now, the Bulgarians weak and diplomatically isolated. We have the greatest opportunity possible. We must gather our allies in this endeavor and liberate southern Serbia. Hmm. Even more fighters would be awesome. Ah. Republicans win Serbian elections, so Serbia marches into the future. So, the Congress of Belgrade. The cooperation of the Balkan nations against a common foe, despite their internal disagreements, is a path well trodden by history already. The Balkan League, formed between Serbia, Bulgaria, and Greece to defeat the Ottoman Empire and the Balkans, was a prime example of that, even though it was disintegrated in the Second Balkan War mere months after victory today. Serbia, remaining Greece, stared down against another hegemon, the Tsardom of Bulgaria, each of them having their territories to reclaim. For almost two decades, the thought of such an alliance occurring was unthinkable. The three Balkan states had been dismantled, weakened, disarmed, and the eye of the great powers of Europe ever watchful. By the 30s, however, the situation has changed conclusively. The ever constant frailty of the Austro Hungarian Empire and the loss lacking will to intervene in the Balkans has already given the mi Balkan miners a chance to rearm, and now it's given the chance for them to plan together. <clears throat> Bipartisan summits and diplomatic talks have been taking place between Serbia and Romania since 1932, and Serbia and Greece since 1934. And it's all accumulated in the Congress of Belgrade, a 14 day summit in the capital of Serbia. As a cultural event as much as a political one, the diplomatic plan between the foreign ministers of three states, taking place in parallel with the dialogue between the universi universities of Belgrade and Bucharest regarding research and student exchanges, for example. Regardless, by the end of the Congress, the delegations of the three states released a 14-point resolution, the most alarming of which was a recognition that the only the self-determination of people, according to the ethnic allegiances, may be considered a just path to sovereignty and territorial claim, and the call for new order in the Balkans to implement this principle, presumably at Bulgaria's expense. Open the Congress, my friends. Open, open, open. So when do we get the conspiracy to conspire against us? Resistance behind, behind Bulgarian lines. <coughs> National mobilization. Ooh, I like that one a lot. Oh, yes, please. The Bulgarians may be weakened by economic failure and internal struggle, but they nevertheless are a formidable foe. Even with the support of our Balkan allies, we need to kick our industry into high gear and mobilize it into a capable war economy. Nice. Albania supports the support for Bulgaria. The, Al the Albanian government has today announced that they will support Bulgaria in any future conflicts between the Belgrade Pact and the Tsardom of Bulgaria. And we join an international arms embargo to put a dent into our weapons, stockpiles, and pre preparation for the war. This is not good. Uh, ooh, Austrian Empire. Ooh, God, no. And I'll support for Bulgaria. That sucks. Nice. The Romanian government, as well as the Greek government, has announced that they will attend the Congress and Belgrade and formally join the Belgrade Pact. Congress of Belgrade. No political power, no problem. So we had elections, but when do we, do we get cooed at all? Here we long, hey, here we long. Kras the Great Morova. I 
I kind of don't trust those guys. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Spread a little bit more. Um, a and I wins. Uh, oh, hello there. Balbo won, huh? Resistance beyond Bulgarian lines. There are over a million Serbs on the Bulgarian side of the border. In the past 20 years, I've not been kind to them. Every day. Even today. They call for a reunification of the motherland. When the war finally begins, they can serve as a powerful tool behind enemy lines. Yes. Yes. We want Macedonia. Macedonia. And Niche. Which, there is. Compliance has gone down, too. So. Nice. Hmm. We definitely have to raise conscription too. Gives a few more days, a few more months, really. Actually, a Republican victory in Brazil. And then we'll do this one, and then we'll do this one, and then we'll go and do it. Not to core would not be bad. Actually, that'd be really good to get. I don't remember historically, or historically when we're supposed to like go, but oh, that's not bad. Military. Oh, that's not bad either. This is probably good to do as well. We're going to restore conscription first. Um, no, look at the army speed. For the military council. Proposed by General Milan Nedic in years gone by, a reform council would go a long way to expand and modernize the fledgling army. With the Austrians offer, back is time to come up, a uh, follow-up on Nedic's proposal and commence in his reforms. Empowered Military League. The Prince of the People. So black money, which is good. Vast resistance is Veno rule, which is good. Uh, waning hegemony. Nice. Seriously, what what what's the point of this? Getting this much national populist leadership. Is there any point? I can't tell. I have a thirty-seven though, everybody. We're gonna need more output. We're gonna need more manpower. We got plenty of equipment though, which is beautiful. We're gonna throw in some support artillery and stuff like that. Oh my goodness, that's why I want to get this army XP first. Hui and Buddhists. Paraguay falls to cynicism again. <laughs> Nice. Yes, still training, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Keep going in there too. Train, 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 train. Good. So can't make that many guns, but we have quite a few already. So, all right. As much as I want that one, I want to restore conscription, and we really need to. This would be super good for us to training new guard. Not bad either. Oh, that's actually really good. But we gotta restore conscription first, and then we'll do the other thing. Alright, so after this one, cross the Great Morava. The Great Morava, the river of the heart of Serbia, the one around which the great modern Serbian state arose, it is now a border between us and Bulgaria. Our brethren beyond it await, and today we shall finally cross it. A glorious fourth Balkan war awaits. Samo Sloga Sabina Spazva. Yes. A Serbian blow with no political power, which is god awful for us, but whatever. Stand up in America? Ah, I see. And America's killing itself. What could be better than that? The Balkans exploding, America exploding. It makes you feel right at home, does it not? Building the Adrian Boone's looking pretty thick, though. But hey, if Albania wants to die too, I'm totally okay with that. Oh, before we go to war, though, make sure we got some support artillery, because we have. Oh, engineers would be nice too. Oh, can we actually do that too? Oh, yes, we can. We get some recon? Oh, yes, we can. Oh, yes, we have no manpower, but whatever. Actually, what is this? Oh, yeah, you're the other type of division. Uh, since you're here, anyways, get the artillery at least. Yes. Very good. <clears throat> hmm? All I can say is we got kind of lucky with the Vaz coming to power, too, so. Our short conscription would be great. Labchevich's speech. Though Serbia looms closer and closer to war, not in all the Republic are eager for today, on the podium before the Skupstina. A speech has been made by Dragomir Labchevich, representative of the Socialist Party of Serbia, an elderly veteran of the socialist politics in Serbia. Labchevich was one of the founders of the Social Democratic Party of Serbia, to which both the socialist and socialist workers claim primogeniture, and a critic of the legendary Dmitry Tukovic. Even before the Valkyrie, Lachevich earned fame as a vehement war opponent of war and Serbian militarism, and today he spoke with the same purpose behind him. In a speech, the politician vividly detailed the loss which the Serbian nation suffered the last time when they instigated a foolish war, an entire generation dead or wounded, and the few who remain have been forced to pick up the pieces. If they had sworn in 1918 and never suffered such a travesty again then, it seems that their leaders have completely forgotten these losses. Not only that, Lachevich states by the president and his government have lied to that entire nation about their motives and to the world as well. They claim to fight for the liberation of the Serbs, but in fact they are controlled by an ultranationalist, Kondrinite clique in the military. 
in which also overt democracy if it means sending thousands of serfs to the meat grinder in Macedonia. The speech and its content, if it spreads across the public, is bound to galvanize a population and raise doubts so close to the war against Bulgaria. And yet, is it a right to suppress the voice of an opponent and thus ultimately prove his point right? I hate what he says, but defend his right to say it. Or, we're going to be a scarred nation, which I don't want. Um, we, get, we lose a lot of war support, which we don't need right now, because we're going to lose some anyways, with a group of population, or a sense of the official, official publications. Whoops! Oh no, Kras of Great Morava! Oh boy! Now we're gonna go ahead and do something else here. What are we gonna do? <sighs> Minor is not my We'll see what happens. How many of the classes? That sounds boring. Um, Air Force would be pretty good. Serbian Mountain Corps would be really probably good to do for us right now. Engineers. We get more population because we still need to raise more population. Right? <coughs> Serbian Mountain Corps. The terrain in the Balkans is very mountainous, especially in the lands we wish to reclaim. To assert the wars to come, the Reform Council is planning on raising a new dedicated mountain corps and cover the best weaponry led by the best generals that will be our most elite forces. Probably followed up with organized Chetniks. Since the end of the Valkyrie, the Serbian Chetniks have fought so bravely through the ultimately doomed war been divided and aimless. By bringing the commanders together, we can foster a unified association Chetniks, and that can effectively fight for Serbian interests. Pretty much, man. So now we've gone to war. Oh. Oh, heck yeah. Come on, boys. So, did, did these guys guarantee independence of these guys? You know what? Screw it. Here's what I'm going to do. All of you guys do this. Except for you two. You will be led by... Oh, Mikhailovich. Uh, attack, defense. Uh, uh, politically connected, which I don't like. Boom, boom. There you go. I'm going to do that, just in case. So, let's us enter here, hopefully, more steadily. More strongly. Fourth Balkan War together for victory. Now, oh, oh, yes, please. Oh, we get convoys. Oh, wow, look at that. Uh, the Fourth Balkan War. The first two decades of the 20th century, the three Balkan Wars shook the region. Two were local affairs, fought only between the Balkan states themselves, whereas the third is more commonly known as the Balkan Front of the Valkyrie. For almost two decades after its conclusion, worldwide observers expected it to be the last two. After all, the Valkyrie left Bulgaria a hegemon in the Balkans, and its three competitors shattered, held down by oppressive peace treaties for having chosen the wrong side and divorced from much of the core lands, surely in Europe, or, or in a Europe, redrawn according to the Germans' whim, and there's no room for revanche's ambitions in the Balkans. It is clear today that as thousands of men across the region take up arms, that these predictions were wrong. Was it the weakness of the so-called Greater Bulgaria which was at fault? Or does the blame fall to Austria and Germany for having grown complacent towards the Balkans and not stopped the rearmament of the Balkan states? By now, the answer does not matter, only bloodshed will ensue. ensue. While well, it seems unlikely that the Fourth Balkan War will escalate into a worldwide conflict, as none of the great powers treat it as a proxy war against one another just yet, there are still potential participants in the war, lying in wait. And nobody knows what the results will be. Can Bulgaria defend its fragile hegemony over the Balkan region and make it stand make it stand the test of time? Or will the Belgrade Pact achieve the new order in the Balkans which it calls for? Forward. You should be able to at least win there. The fall of New York City. Oh, goodbye, New York City. Anything else here with no political power? Capture Macedon Macedonia? Oh, boy. At last, we have a revenge on the Bulgarians. As they're due to recapture Macedonia, which is rightfully article stolen by Bulgarian after the Valkyrie. Oh, crap. That's going to be difficult to do. The last Vojvoda. Not long after the beginning of the war against Bulgaria, we have received an unexpected letter from Petr Bozovic, the famous commander of the Serbian army during the Valkyrie. Of the four Vojvodas, the highest ranking commanders of the Serbian army before and during the Valkyrie, equal to the field marshals, he is the last one still alive, and over a decade of retirement, he has once again offered his services to the Serbian nation, for what he describes as a service in the name of the fatherland for one last time while the body still allows it. Vojvoda Bojovic has accrued fame as one of the most skilled military commanders in Serbian history, leading the exiles of the army after the occupation of Serbia, fighting side by side with the Greeks and French in the Thessaloniki front, and defeating numerically superior Austrian and Bulgarian forces. While his 80 years of age has been out of practice for a long time, our commanders in the Serbian army advised us to accept his enlistment, at least out of sheer respect for his legendary figure, as he was a symbol or a mentor for many of them. Propaganda purposes. Oh, yeah. Uh, who do we have currently have? Oh, it's not too bad. Um, be offensive. On your independent, you might as well get that one, too. Uh, we get more manpower and war support, which would be really good, but accept men. So now let's, let's throw everyone in. Call our allies. There we go. Let them move around. See what they can do. Good. Dispersed industry is going to be great to have. Get some more cap as well. So with that in mind, these guys will probably have to start moving. Oh, we are at war with these guys, which I'm glad I did. Keep some divisions here. Um, Go here, because we got to attack uh, these guys as well. So at this point, you actually might as well just do this. There you go. Solid front line. That's really a defensive. They call it a defensive line, but whatever. Ah, you attack us, huh? What happens if we get Tirana? We open ourselves, expose ourselves to an attack. 
but... Oh, we got it! We got Albania! Oh, that's so good. Hey, here. Did you guys want Northern Epirus? You can have that. I'll take the rest of this. Well, the Belgrade Pact has done really well with that part. Awesome. There you go. Cool. Oh, also, we need to probably do this stuff. Uh, civilian oversight. Oh, local autonomy, yes. There you go, do that one too. They're better overall. Uh, keep these guys in place until we can get in there, so. Get over there. Skopje would be good to get to. Now yeah, hold. You're in the mountains. It's two divisions, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, Romania should be able to do fairly well. Um, if you're attacking too, you might actually be able to win, maybe? Good. Give them a little bit of time. What do we have here? Fate of Albania, we'll do that a little later. Um, we have 40 days to get Skopje, maybe? Yeah, probably. It's going to be a pain in the butt to get to, but whatever. <sighs> nice. We actually might want to attack here, maybe. Maybe put a lot of pressure on these guys right here, right now. And since you guys are winning up there, is there anywhere else we could attack, maybe? Could you attack here, maybe? No. No, you cannot. You might still win here, and then that'll open up Skopje to attack as well. The Romanians are doing quite well, though. These guys lost this little Nika, which sucks, but whatever. Um, yeah, you guys keep going in here. Break over that river. That'd be kind of nice, honestly. Come on. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to get Macedonia. Second International. I don't know why we have to capture Macedonia this fast. It doesn't make any sense to me. I'd love to get in there, but it's probably too late to move. Uh, horses. Oh, never mind. So the Mountain Corps will be great. Oh, again, there's a next. Uh, another division. Good. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, they're only 10 combos, which sucks, but whatever. we got plenty of guns and artillery, so... Throw them on. Throw those big boys on. Now we have no manpower. God dang it. I'll uh, go in here too. That'll be good. Come on, come on, come on. Break them, break them, break them, break them, break them, break them. And are we there? Yes, we are, which is great. Let these guys move out. Will it be possible to actually get Macedonia? Probably, honestly, not. Come on, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Crescent and Danube is nice. Perfect timing for us. Oh, hello there. Go in. Go in. Go in. Go in. Go in. Go in. Force the attack. We gotta win now. Break, break any fortresses that you might see there. Go in. Come on, come on, come on, come on, please. In nine days, nine days. Can we do it in nine days? Probably not, honestly, probably not. Oh, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, can we get it? Can we get it? Come on. I'm clenching myself too hard right now. Oh, my God. Oh, we got it. We got it. Did we get it? Oh, we got it. <laughs> ah, when you clench yourself too hard. Ah. Oh, my goodness. Go in. Keep them all occupied. Um, you guys will win there. You guys actually might win there too. Broke over the river. Romania's broken over the river. And in uh, Dobrugia. Which is awesome. These guys almost made it back. That sucks for you guys. You lost most of your army, which sucks for you, but whatever. Uh, fate of Albania. After campaign across the Albanian countryside, our enemies in Tirana finally capitulated, leaving us with control of the country. Our position in the Adriatic has been cemented, but we not, must now decide what to do with Albania. No, we'll figure it out eventually. Good. Keep going in. Keep going in. More propaganda would be nice, but whatever. Alright, so you guys are just straight up not going to win here. Be real, you're just not going to win. Yeah, there's no way we can get, actually get Sophia. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, there's no way you could actually do that. That fast. Not sure what the mod developers are thinking about that, but whatever. Um, get over there too. Oh, we didn't get Albania. I don't care. I really don't give a crap about Albania. Um, you might actually still be able to win right there, maybe. Especially with enough support. Especially from Romania on that side. Oh, well, yes, you can. Venetian Revolt, very nice. Nice. Organize the Chetniks, which is good. Organ modernize engineering battalions. An unexpected result of a rapid rearmament. Through our frontline troops are effective. Their support units have been figuratively left behind. The Reform Council's plans for the modernization, and thus have been put into practice. This is always good to have too. 
Alright, Sonic Independence, nice. How can you not win here, man? Can you actually help out here? Oh, yeah, you can. Yes, that's good. Take one to support the attack here, and take another support to support the attack there, too. So dumb. You shouldn't get penalized for that. That's stupid. That's really stupid. Really? You can't win here either? Video uh, Vidan. That represents the day to commemorate uh, Prince Saint Prince Lazar and the Serbian holy martyrs who gave their lives to defend the true faith during the epic battle of Kosovo against the Ottoman Empire. Ottoman? The Ottoman Empire. On June 28, 1389. As regards the national holiday in Serbia. Serbia will never forget its heroes. They're almost out of manpower, which is awesome. Good, more divisions have died. As they should. So now, we gotta figure out which, how and which way we're going to attack. Can you go there? You might actually be able to win there, maybe. Seize his power, good. And he can go in. And he can. Even more firepower. Let those horsey boys do the work. I should just duplicate you, anyways. Oh well. Hungary is not looking very good, no, is it? Um, we're gonna have to remove these guys. Sorry about that. I wasted political army XP, I mean. Army XP. Cool. A little thicker horses. If the horses ain't thick, we don't want them. I like some thick horse boys. Sounds really weird to say, but whatever. Nope, syndicalism in Ukraine. Nice. 37. Probably get some motorized. Can we capture Sophia now? Ah, we did! Yay! Good job, guys. Good job. Now, if these guys would attack here, that'd be great. Or here, too. Either one. It doesn't really matter to me. <clears throat> so, this way, we can go over here and circle the, and destroy all these guys. Come on, will one of these two guys get attacked? Please, please, please move and get attacked or something. You know what? We might be strong enough to do this as well, maybe. Now throwing more guys over there, which sucks. Oh, we got the Romanians helping us out. They threw that extra division in too, but we'll see, we'll see. Moscow Accord, very cool, very cool. You know what? If you don't want to win there, Romania, you gotta stay in the battle, man. Um Alright. Well, they want to ban on the front, so be it. Read out training new the guard. The Valkyrie began many years ago, much of the old guard have either died or moved on. It's high time to train a new class of officers, the leader of troops, armed with vital knowledge of their predecessors. How many have we lost? It's not bad. 10,000. We killed off 40,000. Uh, four for one is, I would say, pretty good. That's pretty darn good, not gonna lie. Oh, yeah, guys. Yeah, more convoys. Yeah, we'll take that. Don't let these guys move. Do not let them move. I know we can win there. If we really want to, we could win there, but. Will the game allow us to? Maybe, maybe not. Planes? Yeah. Or, I guess, just go here. Oh, yes! Yes! Now that's good. Go in, everybody. Go in, go in, go in. That's, that's sealed their fate. That has got to have sealed their fate. That is five divisions dead. Just dead men walking. <clears throat> good. Lots, uh, not a lot of armies, but quite a bit more. Come on, come on. I know we're not winning here a whole great deal, but still. These guys should be completely out of manpower by now. Yep, they are. Oh, we're out of guns, too, probably. But still. No, actually, we got a few guns. Now we're almost out of guns. Beautiful. Concentrated assaults, yes, please. The First and Second Revolution. One of the most renowned political philosophers and legal professors in the Republic of Serbia, Slobodan Janovic, has published a revision to one of his first works, Political and Legal Discussions. And his most important change was the addition of a new preface and introduction in this preface. Jovanovic made a leap towards a leap forward and described the events of 1925-26 as not as a Republican Revolution, but as a second Serbian Revolution. The first Serbian Revolution, referred to Jovanovic's, was the first three decades long Serbian Revolution, led by Karol Dorod Petrovic and numerous other heroes of Serbian history, which happened concurrently with the Greek War of Independence and culminated in the recognition of the vassal principality of Serbia. <clears throat> 
As generally seen as the beginning of modern Serbian history, on the first step in his long journey to independence, Janonovic explains his decision to name it the first later in the text, the second Serbian revolution of the post valkyrie period, should be understood not as an independent event, but as the culmination of the ideals of Kara Dorod and the first Serbian revolutionaries. <coughs> From this initial statement, there are numerous conclusions to be made. The Serbian people live a history marked by a redemptive struggle in the name of freedom and liberty, be it for the freedom from foreign oppressors or the freedom from unjust government. The democracy which they shall enjoy should not be understood as a Western import, but rather the development of a unique Serbian culture and identity. And vice versa, democracy should be considered a core element of Serbian identity. A Serbian chocolate flies of freedom. Who will be the Serbian side of the Nikov? The impact of Boris Savinkov's rise of power, pronouncing a new ideological foundation for the future of Russia and possibility of all of Europe, could not be understated, especially not Serbia, a country with deep historical and cultural ties with its East Slavic hegemon. A new political treatise, with a rather inflammatory name, who will be the Serbian Savinkov, is making rounds across Serbia and its author, Velibor Jonic. Jonic is a veteran of the Republican Revolution. A politics and history professor who became a member of the Republican Party after the Valkyrie, he left after the Revolution, however, and temporarily withdrew from politics. A vehement nationalist with authoritarian tendencies, he saw the Revolution as a national rebirth from a dynasty that failed the Serbs, and a liberal democracy established afterwards did not satisfy his dreams. And who will be the Serbian Savinkov? Janovich seeks to draw the parallel between the Russian Republic before Savinkov and Serbia, both Slavic states of similar to spiritual composition, which were allured by the illusions of liberal democracy after defeat in the war. Russia was hijacked by a dictator following a new ideological creed, which Janovich describes as national revolutionary, clearly radical and one against the status quo, but an idea which seeks to bring the country back towards where it truly needs to focus, that is, revanchism. The question of the treatise's title is rhetorical. Janovich does not provide an answer, however, he writes that he will not ex only expect the Serbian revolution to be hijacked, but also welcome this end of opiate, opiate of the Serbian people. Hopefully, no one. Well, you'll see about that. And that's not bad to do, but the readout. Colonel Draza Mikhailovich is no doubt a controversial figure, however. He's also visionary. It was superb plans for ensuring Serbia's defenses are up to scratch in this case that our conquest backfire. Let's see for some funding and men to Mikhailovich so we can recreate his readout. And hopefully he'll stop interfering with the council. <laughs> we'll see about that. Nothing there, nothing there. Yeah. Yeah, the Bulgarians are done. Now, we've lost a lot of guys, too, but, like, that was a really good experience for us. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We should have absolute air superiority. They have two planes. We have 88. Are they doing force defense? They might have been doing force defense. Look at that. Oh, they do. Oh, they are doing... Well, they were doing force defense for a while. Yeah, they were definitely doing force defense for a while. I'll go down here. Cut them off. Hopefully, they can raid their convoys and stuff. Yeah, these guys cannot do anything else. Train the new guard. Mikhailovich. New army tactics, not bad. Modern howitzers, begin mechanization. Oh, well, we get motorized anyways. Let's not, let's not do that one. And let's do this one. That's fine. Um, lessons of the last war. The fall, fourth Balkan War has ended. I do want to do regional tractor stations, but I like this one. New army tactics. War has changed. What worked two decades ago will not work today, especially with the advent of the Air Force and the tank. The Reform Council has resolved to train our soldiers and officers alike in the art of modern warfare. Nice. Actually, yeah, they still have a port over there, which sucks too, but whatever. Thessalonica, nice. Still getting a lot of army XP. Keep learning, guys. Bulgaria asked for peace. A large part of the homeland occupied and the forces in full retreat. Bulgaria asked for, for peace. They'll hand over all disputed territories. <coughs> But we ought to retreat our forces behind these new borders. An independent Bulgarian still continue to exist for now. Bulgaria packs lands triumphant. That should be utterly crushed. I want to go utterly crushed. After what happened to us in the Valkyrie, like, god dang it. Like, no. War exhaustion. Our country has entered the Fourth Balkan War. The promise that this war will be short and swift in, in swift territorial gains. But now, it's still in the populace soon for peace. What a bunch of BS. Rumors have been spread that the Bulgarians offered a very generous peace treaty which would fulfill all of our territorial claims, but has been refused. Even so, more men will be sent to die in war for nothing more. Our officers struggle to motivate their soldiers to continue fighting. The home front is certainly unruly. What a bunch of crap that is. Are you kidding me? The war... The front is not unstable. Are you kidding me? Who... Why would you... Why? I get that it's supposed to be, you know, you know, for the Bulgarian player, but still. Still. Force the attack. You will not... Finish the war unsuccessfully. Or you just go right there. Pull and go right there. Cut this division off. Kill them all that way. And that division will die. Pretty easily. Really? Now you send someone here? Sure, guys. Let's take a convoy. We should easily be able to smash through these guys. Come on, Romania. Oh my god, Romania. Romania sucks so much. Balkan war exhaustion. War goes down. Division uh, goes down. 
Doesn't matter. They're out of manpower. So. Oh, no, never mind. They got more manpower back. They have no guns, kind of like us, though. So, look. The Bulgarians had a chance of peace before. They chose not to take it. Nice. The readout. Good to begin mechanization, but get some new army tactics. And we'll do the original uh, tractor stations again. Oh, there we go. For those guys. Modern day and age hand tools and plows are being replaced by tractors and machines. The series has become a modern advanced economy. It needs to have more of the latter. Well, less of the former. Let us establish a system of leasing and borrowing state owned tractors to improve our productivity. Come on. This is stupid. There is no war. There's like very little war exhaustion. I should say none, but there's very little. There really is very little. Win right here. We'll be able to concentrate our forces better when we do it like this. Go all in. There you go. These guys will die here. They will absolutely die. I don't care how many servers it takes. Bulgaria will be a memory. There'll be a new Prussia of the Balkans. Come on. They literally have nowhere to go. Just delete them, man. Five divisions. Five divisions. They literally have nothing here. Literally nothing. This is stupid. This is incredibly stupid. Where do you have to go? Where do you have to go, huh? You should not have military access through there and to recover your divisions. Oh my god, this is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in Kaiserreich. Incredibly stupid thing in Kaiserreich. Are you kidding me? Arbitrarily giving us war exhaustion. Pfft, come on. Would you hold and not attack in there anymore, ding dongs? So we've lost 37,000. Oh, I love arbitrary peace deals. Uh, Collins holds on. Oh, I've never seen that one before. New army tactics. Cancel one of these is fine. Oh, oh yeah, we'll take some of that stuff there. Why not? Uh, we'll do that one too. Get ready to attack. Actually, attacking there would probably be a really good idea. Oh, they want to attack us again? Oh, we'll see what happens. Damocles project. Very cool. Very cool. I do want to attack there. They're out of stuff. They're just like us. Get into there. Get into there. Three. I kind of doubt we'd be able to do anything here, but we'll see. We can try it. Yeah, just just arbitrarily give them more defense. Yeah, that that's that's fair. That's great. That's just that's all. That's awesome. You should honestly easily be able to win there. They have nothing. I cannot agree with the devs here on just like, oh, give them more exhaustion. I, I really don't care. You're going to force the attack. You have to win there. You have to win. This is stupid over here. That's incredibly stupid. Come on. Just win there. My god. It's fine for now. Keep going in. Thirty-eight. Cool. There you go. There you go. That's what we like to see. Uh, begin mechanization. Until today, the Serbian army is built and built upon the strength of the soldier. However, with a new, never-ending march of technology, motor vehicles have become a key asset in increasing soldier effectiveness. From now on, we'll motorize our forces, making them both faster and more well-rested. Oh, you didn't like that? You don't like it when people try to kill you off, huh? Huh, Bulgaria? We're gonna die now. So. I'm sorry, but no. If you're completely cut off, you should have absolutely no way of being able to resist our attacks. Like, seriously. Come on. Grow up. Now we're going to get that done, done anyways eventually later on. Up back there. Go in. Go in. Go in. This is stupid over here. Good. Good. So they have a few divisions left. Go in. Arbitrary war exhaustion. Thank you so much. Thank you. Because you can't institute censorship for some reason. 
Uh, much of Europe, uh, including Serbia, was met with a shocking sight tonight. And an aurora borealis, extending as far as a Mediterranean color in the sky in red blood color. For many, this was a beauty to behold, but the superstitious immediately took this as a sign from the god above, clearly. With such a show, he was trying to tell the people something, though it was a warning, a favor, or a threat. The most striking interpretation came from a Serbian preacher in the Moravo countryside, who interpreted this as a sign of the first thing. It was a warning, and no ordinary warning, to the people of Europe. In this town and village, surrounding villages, he proclaimed the god is aware of an impending apocalypse, and not one driven by four horsemen, but rather by the peoples of Europe themselves, in less than ten years. The rivers of the Kanda will run red with blood, much like the ran, sky ran red that night. A ferocious eagle, a swing span large enough to cover Europe, will fight a storm of ice and snow from the east, and declare itself a defender of the world from a pure evil. And yet its heart is just as dark as evil it claims to fight. A fascinating tale. The panic caused among the superstitious is anything but fascinating, however. Stop looking at the sky, and kill off every last Bulgarian. And we won the war. It is over. My god, it is over. That was stupid. Why would we tell them that we gave them a favorable peace deal? We wouldn't. We absolutely would not. So I don't understand why the devs have thought like, oh, well, I understand why. It's, but, no. Just no. Just no. Uh, anyone has a core on any of this territory? Hell, I'll get stuff to the Ottomans, but they kind of backstabbed us. So we'll take all your territory too? Well, that was an extremely costly war, but hey, at least the Austrians are still killing each other. War Balkan War Exhaustion? Well, thank God that's gone. We are at war. That's gone too. Fate of Bulgaria? Oh, view not integrated areas. Oh, and... Okay, so when is this coup fire? Like, this, there needs to be a coup, right? There has to be a coup. Um, do we get any events about, like, releasing these guys? Greece do be looking pretty nice. Romania do be looking pretty nice as well. Uh, let's do this one more focus. The return of IMRO. Let me mention uh, the IMRO. Well, Phil, elderly... What the heck? Uh, Serbians with troubled thoughts. An ultra-nationalist revolutionist, a revolutionary terror group. The IMRL fought long for a Bulgarian Macedonia with the brutal pre valkyrie era uh, uprisings in Ilden and Tivias against any power that got in the way of the so-called liberation of the Macedonian region. Sons of Valkyrie, Bulgaria's hegemony in the region seen the IMRL go into a form of limbo, being into history with a goal achieved. A recent reclamation of Macedonia was always expected to be difficult to consolidate, but today the National Assembly has received word that Bulgarian colonel and revolutionary Ivan Mihailov has restored the occupied organization, declaring an open war against Belgrade in the process. The group will no doubt get support, clandestine or otherwise, from the Bulgarian elements, which in turn will embolden their actions. If we do not crush them swiftly, then military officials worry that the partisans may not be able to be beaten at all. Macedonian flames, well, stop training. We got some more people to put down. Excuse me. There you go. Lol. Inter internal Macedonian revolutionary stuff. Group? Uh. Round 1. The mountains and hills of Macedonia make the region of godsend any would-be guerrilla revolutionary, and so the conflict against the IMRO takes place in the form of irregular small-scale warfare. Our Macedonian bands and chetas infiltrate the rest of Macedonia from the organization's HQ in the mountains, against which the Serbian army and law enforcement are responsible with regular patrols and similarly small-scale organization. Our resources in this war are limited. However, should we defend the larger cities in the north, such as Skopje, or should we focus on the rural mountains south? If they attack south, you will win this round. If they attack north, um, I think I'm just going to sell. If we have resistance reaches 100%. You will fail. So I'm going to save here and probably call it an episode. So then we'll see what happens. If you want to read about this stuff, please go right ahead. But I will see whatever we can do to do the best we can. And please let me know. Is there any way to get cooed? Like, we've got all this national popular support for nothing, it feels like. But I already have difficulties with this mod. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also see what happens with the rest of this campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great Serbian Belgrade Pact rest of your day.